Hello and welcome to tutorial key point video for the sixth tutorial on W200. We briefly looked at uh, TMA04 and I stressed the value of uh, keeping as much detail in those searches so that you can compare strategies, compare different databases um, to find which is the most effective. What we spent a lot of time on during the tutorial was direct effect and I sent you a couple of handouts uh, one in um, a flow diagram format and the other in written format uh, which takes you through the various stages of a direct effect question. So uh, when faced with a question about how does an individual enforce the rights that EU law has given them, go through that flow diagram uh, looking first at direct effect, the clear, precise, unconditional the Van Gend uh, criteria, uh, which applies whatever form uh, the right was found in, whether it was treaty article, regulation uh, or directive. And then for directives, those two additional ones of date of implementation and whether it's an emanation of the state. And I would urge you to have a look at Foster and British Gas. Uh, and make sure that you're thoroughly familiar with that case and how it assists in deciding what uh, an emanation of the state is. We then looked at indirect effect where you would be uh, taking action against the same uh, individual, a uh, legal individual, um, but in this case because direct effect itself hasn't been able to help uh, you will attempt to read the national legislation to give effect to the European right, which may be possible, but in some cases where there would be violence done to the language, that may not be possible. So then we moved on to state liability. This time the action is against the state, uh, akin to uh, a tort action in, in English law where you're suing the state because it has caused you harm by its failure to properly implement the EU law. So make sure that you're fully familiar with that flow diagram. We then moved on to free movement of goods and we looked at the different categories free movement of goods, of persons and of business. Uh, very uh, uh, useful uh, set out in the uh, the manuals on goods. Again, I've sent you a flow diagram to take through through the various stages of a free movement of goods case, um, and I would stress again the importance of uh, knowing that a QR is a quantitative restriction, one where the quan it's the quantity, whether it be uh, so many tonnes, so many volume, uh, so much value, or the biggest quantity uh, of all, the zero quantity, the complete ban. And then the MEQR, the measures equivalent to quantitative restrictions, so make sure that you know your Dassonville formula. Uh, goes on to distinguish between distinctly applicable MEQRs, ones that only apply to uh, goods either going or coming from uh, outside the country, or those that are indistinctly apply applicable that will apply to all. And it is only, and I stress this, only indistinctly applicable ones that uh, the Cassis de Dijon case can be used. Again, a very important case to use. And finally, the Keck case, which uh, deals with those uh, MEQRs which are allowable because uh, they come under the Keck uh, selling arrangements. Derogation is the other concept you need to get hold of. Uh, the idea that there's a very narrow, restricted uh, circumstances in which a QR or, an, or a distinctly applicable uh, MEQR can be uh, justified upon. I then spent some time looking at the summer and revising. 
uh, and I stress that all sorts of things can help or hinder uh, your study and unfortunately some of the traditional student practices are actually the worst things that you could do uh, in prepping for exam. The, the ones on the late night revision, the use of stimulants, particularly coffee and uh, caffeine, um, giving up on your exercise or taking uh, comfort food, the bad food, which again, uh, greater evidence now of the impact on our thinking of what we eat, what we drink, uh, whether we're tired and whether we've not taken any exercise. So to increase your effectiveness, eat well, exercise. We stressed, and I would encourage you to have a look at what it says in the Open University um, guide on, uh, on exams, uh, the key importance of condensing, getting the information that you've got in the manuals and the books and condensing it to something smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, and that process of condensing, uh, one, focuses you on what's important, but most importantly, uh, it um, lays down those memory uh, tracks. Verbalising, very useful, talking through either with colleagues or even uh, giving little lectures to your cat or little f uh, furry toy so that you're verbalising, again, laying down the memory tracks but also uh, you can tell when you're waffling. And finally, how you represent it. Use the, the ways that are most useful to you. So it may be fly diagrams, it may be charts, uh, it may be um, coloured pictures, it may be numbered lists. Use what works for you. There are lots of memory techniques uh, for uh, keeping that information there. So we talked about that. And uh, I look forward to uh, our next tutorial key point video, which will, of course, be the last. Thank you.